everyone, it's Leo, and it's time to talk about episode 21 from Wonderful Precure or Neanderful Precure. I think this was my favorite episode so far. It was really, really good. And I'm just like, this was everything. So, before we talk directly about the episode, there are some things that I want to say about Wonderful Precure in general. I feel like there are two things that can act as a north for us to discuss about this episode. The first one is that all of the conflicts in Wonderful Precure that have appeared in Wonderful Precure up until now happen because of miscommunication. All of them happened because the characters did not know how to communicate very well. We have to remember that the gift of communication between humans and animals was given by Nikosama, or a deity, we don't exactly know it was Nikosama, but we can, you know, put 2 plus 2 and say it's 4, so I will say it was Nikosama. And the second thing is that I feel like in the world of Wonderful Precure, so far, there is no malice. There's no evil. Even when you think about the villain and the villain, the, the wolf that appeared a couple times, there's no evil in Wonderful Precure. So every time there is a miscommunication between the characters. There's no one who's wrong, and there's no one who's exactly right. You know, the two sides have uh, a good argument in their favor, something good about what happened and what they're thinking. Uh, I feel like this is uh, something that happens in Wonderful Precure, and I feel like Yoshimi Narita, the director, the main writer of the season, is be doing a stellar job in terms of the writing of the show. Uh, the, the world that the team has been creating is really, really interesting. And even though I miss the combat, I do understand that uh, in this season, the concept of the chases, it works very well with the rest. I do miss the combat though. Not gonna lie. But now let's talk about episode 21. In this episode, Yuki goes to school. And we have lots of funny moments of Yuki being a cat. You know, she is uh, she sitting together with Mayu and then talking to the guy that sits by Mayu's side to tell him to leave. She is such a diva. I love it. After that, uh, that very funny scene, we have Komugi interacting with Yuki, and I love Yuki's poker face. She does not move an inch. And uh, at that moment, we have some nice back and forths between them, like Komugi telling Yuki that she wants to teach Yuki stuff, and Yuki's like, I never asked you to teach me anything. I love how cold she is sometimes. And the one thing that I found really, really lovely is the fact that they call themselves Wonderful Precure. Yuki, uh, Komugi says a lot about wonderful. She, she uses the word wonderful a lot to describe things. And it's very funny because Satoru describes them, what wonderful means in Japanese. And they were like, oh, really? They didn't even know. It is so funny. They have, Komugi and Iroha, they share the same brain cell. And... And then they call themselves Wonderful Precure. And then Yuki's like, I don't want to be part of it. And, you know, it's obviously a different conversation than Yuki was having in the last few episodes because she can't say one Wonderful Precure because one is the sound that dogs make and she's a cat. And she like, okay, Yuki's amazing. She's a diva devil. But she's all, she also has one brain cell only. <laughs> and she can't say one. She has to say another thing. So she can't call herself Wonderful Precure. I love it. What a great mind was behind that scene. Oh my god. But then, Komugi says, oh my god, I couldn't teach Yuki how to be a human. And Yuki says, it's very easy to act like a human. And she proves that for her, that is very easy indeed. And then we have some amazing, devilicious scenes from Yuki. It was gorgeous. I loved it. But then, after that, uh, they are embroidering. Oh, before they are embroidering, they go out to eat. 
I feel like that is a very important moment as well. When they're eating, Mayu is feed uh, Yuki is feeding Mayu. We have a scene in which the, the people are like a little starstruck with the way Yuki acts. And they invite Yuki to be part of the drama club. And Yuki, what Yuki does, I think it's very symbolic. She looks at Mayu and says, do you want to join? And Mayu says, no, obviously it has nothing to do with what, what Mayu likes doing because Mayu is very shy. So being on the stage for her would be frightening. And Yuki's like, okay, if Mayu is not joining, I'm not joining. So uh, after that, we have another very beautiful scene in which Yuki is walking away and Mayu's like, why don't you try making other friends? Why don't you try doing other things apart from me in the school? And then Yuki comes to her and says, I'm here for you. I am here at this school because I want to be with you. Later on in the episode, we understand that a little better. And then she touches Mayu with her forehead. That is something that she does as a cat as well. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Obviously, there is a sort of a creepy factor. I, when I was watching it, I was a little bothered because I put myself in Mayu's shoes. If someone was acting like Yuki is acting towards Mayu to me, I would be a little creeped out. But then I have to remember that it's not a random person. It is Yuki, the one Mayu loves the most, the one Mayu trusts the most. So for her, it makes sense. And now Yuki is not trying uh, I mean, she is some sort in some sort of way, but she's not actively trying to keep Mayu away from her friendships. And then we go to the embroidery moment. Uh, very, very lovely uh, to see the girls embroidering different things. Uh, and also very interesting that Yuki looks at Mayu and says, it's very admirable you being able to do it because I try to be a human and I get, it's easy for her to do everything. But when I try to embroider it, it's, it's hard to do embroidering. And that's a very hard word to pronounce too, sorry. Uh, so it's nice that Yuki uh, sees a lot of value in the things that Mayu does. I love that about themselves. And then when they are, uh, they were not able to finish, uh, Iroha and Komi were not able to, to do like a good embroidery because they were having a very hard time, they decide to do it in their break. When they're doing it, uh, Satoru joins in, Satoru shows a Daifuku embroidery too, very cute. When they join in, we have uh, a, another very beautiful moment. So they decide to exchange. Komugi wants to exchange with Yuki and Iroha with Mayu. Yuki does not want to, but Mayu wants to, so Yuki gives in. And then Mayu starts working on her embroidery and she gets so caught up in it, she doesn't listen to anyone's voices. That is something that Yuki understands. Yuki knows about it. But the other girls, it's a new thing for them. They know that Mayu can get very focused on stuff. And for Iroha, that is something admirable. She calls her kakoi, uh, which means like cool. That's a very cool aspect of Mayu for Iroha. And then uh, Yuki calls Iroha outside. And it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like uh, intimidating the way she calls her. It's like, come here. And then she, they both go. And Komugi goes after. Satoru stays behind with Mayu. And Yuki is very worried because of the past that happened, something that happened with Mayu in the past. Just want to say that I love the scene visually, like the way Yuki's face was drawn with the vitro, it was very, very beautiful. And the pain in her face was also very beautiful. And uh, we get to learn a little bit more from Mayu's past. Mayu had a very good friend, and this friend had a chinchilla, which is a very cute animal, and I also love this name, Shinshila. And then, because this friend had a Shinshila, Mayu was going to do an embroidery of a Shinshila to this friend. But Mayu gets so caught up 
that this friend was trying to communicate with her and she couldn't because mine was focused. She did not dialogue with this friend, she did not talk to this friend and after she finished her friend was not there anymore. She lost her friend and she got very sad. She cried a lot, Yuki was there to comfort her and now we know what happened in the past in Mayu's life, in Mayu's previous school. That just adds to her hardship of making friends, right? Here is a, a point that I made at the start, miscommunication. Mayu never told the girl that she focuses so much that she doesn't talk. Maybe Mayu didn't even notice that. And the girl, she felt ignored, probably. She probably felt sad that her friend was not talking to her anymore. She felt uh, probably a little humiliated by talking to her and not having a response back. So, as I said before, there's no malice. There's no right or wrong. Both sides ended up hurt in this situation because there was no communication. I think that it was very easy to make Mayu a target of bullying, for example, but they didn't. They went out of their way to create a situation in which there is no villain. And I feel like that is real in every situation in Wonderful Precure, in every conflict in Wonderful Precure, I feel like this is going to be the case in the main conflict, not the main conflict, but the conflict of the Precure side of Wonderful Precure as well. Everything is being very consistent in Wonderful and I don't think that's going to be different. And so, <clears throat> Mayu is scared. Yuki, sorry, Yuki is scared. Yuki does not want to be, to see Mayu going through that again. She does not want for Maya to have a friend to break her heart again. And I think it was funny, but also lovely that Kongi was there at the time. Kongi was like, I don't understand. But then Kongi shares her experience with uh, Iroha and the miscommunication they had. This also happened with Yuki and Mayu. They were able to sort out their feelings. Iro and Komugi were also able to sort out their feelings. What they were trying to say is, if there's ever a problem, they can talk and sort it out. They can resolve the issue, if that's the case. They are able to talk. That is an ability that they have. It's a possibility for them. And then we go back to Mayu. A great scene visually because it is a, it is a thing that has been used in Precure before it is used in a lot of media but then when we go back when Mayu wakes up no one is there only Sato is there what was her first thought they talked to me I did not answer I fumbled it up my friendships don't like me anymore that's what like Okay, she did not say that, but we could see in her face that she was feeling down because she knew that she was not able to talk back. And everything was cloudy. There was a shadow in the classroom at the time. But then, Satoru talked to her and told her that that ability of hers that caused a problem for her years ago in another school with another friend was seen by Iroha, and Iroha thought it was cool. It was not a problem anymore. And then, in this scene, the sun came out, and it illuminated both Satoru and Mayu. Something that for Mayu was a bad thing, now it is a positive thing. Gorgeous. Really, really nice. And then we have the Garu Garu. The Garu Garu is a panda, and pandas sleep a lot. So, the Garu Garu made everyone sleep with its power. But thankfully, we had Komugi. And the writing in this episode is so smart, even in this part. Because I feel like, for the most part, 
the chase scenes they're very unimaginative and they lack a good writing in most cases. In this episode it was very different because they were very smart with the sleep thing because when Komugi gets sleepy she gets very energetic and that's what happened here. She did not let, I mean they ended up getting sleepy but she woke everyone up so they were able to transform. In the transformation now we have the, the roll call or the introduction of Kira Nyami and Kira Lily and we have the dual transformation and both of them posing together calling themselves Neanderthal Precure because Nyami cannot say one they're full precure. I love this. And they love the name and then they go out and they try to do something against the Garu Garu. Pure Wonderful is there. She's trying her best but she can't do much. You know, she uses her body but, you know, the, the Garu Garu is sleeping but it's not dumb, baby. And uh, it was trying to get sleepy. Uh, it was trying to make them sleep. Cure Friendy slept very fast. Um, Satoru also slept, but Nyami and Lillian were trying their best and, you know, at the end of the day they were able to stay awake, even though Lillian almost slept, but then that scene was kind of fierce. I love how gracious they are. There's a lot of poshness in their movements, so I really liked it. <laughs> it was a beautiful scene nonetheless. And, uh... When Satoru is sleepy and talking about pandas, he says he says that pandas like tires, uh, and they play with tires a lot. And so Kurinami, to my surprise, slayed. I mean, I'm sorry. To my surprise, I mean, what she did was very surprising, but she always slays, so it's not a surprise if she slays. So she simply goes in. She uses for the first time we see the Amity Ribbon Tambourine being used. For a kid eating animal, I absolutely love her animation for that. Oh my god, it's so cool! And she uses the kid eating fox power to turn Cure Wonderful into a tire. Oh my god, that was so smart. Wonderful wanted to play, she had a lot of energy. A tire is a good thing for a panda. The kid eating fox has this power. Cure Nyami got all of it together and used it. Cure Nyami, you are a queen. Oh my god, girl, I just love it. And so uh, the tire is used <laughs> in a very funny way, obviously, as Komugi always does. So we have Amity Lumiere being used, the panda is purified, and now we have the Kidding Panda back. Kidding Panda, very cute. And for the first time, we see the animation of Nyami and Lillian healing and bringing an animal back to Nico Garden. I didn't really like this animation. I don't like this animation for Wonderful and Freddy and I don't like it for Nami and Lillian either. It is so slow, it is so boring and there's some CG scenes in the middle. I just think it's weird. I I don't know. They're, they're like they're pretty and I do like the 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 visuals like the the aesthetic for Nami and Lillian. It's very pretty the green and the blue together with the way they use like it's very like minty, I love it, but that's like, I, I like the aesthetic, and that's it. So at the end of the episode, we have them trading the embroideries. Obviously, uh, Mayu does the best one with Kongi and Wonderful, very cute. Uh, Iroha's one is also cute with the way she drew Yuki. Yuki gives a shout out to the best cure ever, Cure Butterfly, by doing a butterfly for Komuki. Obviously because Komuki is a papillon, and papillons are the, they're the names of her dog uh, breed. And also it's a, it's a butterfly breed as well. So, you know, she drew a butterfly, it makes a lot of sense. But in my dreams, in my fantasy, she did it because of Cure Butterfly. And then Komuki does... Uh, a snowman for Yuki and, you know, horrible, but with a lot of soul, obviously, and it makes Yuki laugh. Obviously, Yuki and Komugi now have a relationship, and I just love, again, the writing. Stellar. It is so good how they are able to uh, do things naturally. They did not have to shame Yuki. 
Not even once. She has her way, she has her personality, and Komugi can be a pushy person. And Yuki does not like that, but they never really shamed Yuki for anything. It's just natural the way their friendship is happening and evolving. Everything is wonderful. Anyways, ladies, this is my view on EXO 21, particularly my favorite so far from Wonderful Precure. Very, very good. Next week, we have a Komugi episode, and we have a character that looks very cool as well. I just loved this, and I just loved the empty ribbon tambourine being used for the kidney animal. I cannot wait to see Lillian using it as well, but Nyami does layage as she always does. Also, I think next week we're getting a new ending. Fingers crossed for a new ending next week. Anyways, babies, this is it for now. I want to take this little time to thank the members of the Magical Cinnamon channel. If you're a member here on YouTube, on Patreon, if you support me on Throne, thank you very, very much for your support. And if you've watched up until now, thank you so much as well. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, bye-bye!